I love where it says, I called and you answered. We serve a God that answers us. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, Ephesians chapter 3, I alluded to these verses a few times over the last couple of weeks. Um, these are kind of going to be our verses we're going to look at a lot in 2021 as a church. Um, I've really felt led to do that by God, and, and, and he's really laid them on my heart the last few days, especially as I was preparing my message this morning. Um, but again, Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 20, if you would stand when you find that. Ephesians 3, and starting in verse 20. <clears throat> now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Most gracious, kind Heavenly Father, God, we come to you again thankful for this opportunity to be in your house. God, we thank you for your word and the blessings that we can receive from it, God, just by opening up the book. God, we thank you for your willingness to, to forgive us where we failed you, God, your willingness to send your son to die on a cross that we could be forgiven, and we just thank you for that. God, again, this morning, we just ask that you be with this time this morning, be with our message, allow it to be your words that are spoken, allow our hearts and our minds to, to be clear, God, of what's going on, on outside of these four walls, God, just to receive your message this morning. And God, just uh, allow us to, to use it to glorify you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and amen. So when we begin a new year, oftentimes we hear things of resolutions. People make them every year that either we're going to do more or less of something. Things that we want to get better at, things that we want to spend more time doing. One of the most common things that people choose to start doing is to go to the gym. I'm not going to do that because I don't like going anyway, but they, they decide the beginning of the year, January 1st of every year, I'm going to go get my gym membership and I'm going to start exercising and taking care of myself a little better. It's, exercise is a necessary evil. We all know that it, it is a necessary evil, sadly. It may not be the best way to start the year. Each year, 12% of new gym membership gym memberships occur in January. Now, 12% may not sound like a big number, but they're all like January 1st or 2nd that these 12% happens, or maybe they happen in December. I didn't look at that. But 80% of those who join in January, January will quit within five months. Now, five months seems like a long time, but odds are that 80% is probably a different amount of time, right? But from the statistics that I saw, and it said 4% quit by the end of the month. So within 30 days, 4% of people say, I'm done going to the gym. This isn't working out. Now, that's just going to the gym. I didn't look at people that choose to read their Bible. Um, I have made it through my Bible a couple times over the years in a year. A lot of times I would start, and by about March, I'd be done because I was at a part that I got kind of bored with personally, and that's terrible to say because the Bible is not boring. But personally, I just got bored with it just reading it. And I can say that I've done that more times than I've read through it. We get discouraged sometimes, though. We make these goals, and we make them so high that sometimes we can't even reach them. I'm going to start doing this in 2021, but I'm never going to get there, so I don't know why I'm starting this. I don't know why I'm setting such a high goal. But the world would constantly tell us that it's good to make resolutions that are full of selfish desires and selfish growth. There is such a thing as selfish growth in your life. We can grow in the wrong direction that would lead us away from from the right things and from what we need to be looking at. But the world would tell us it's okay to make every resolution about me, me, me. I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to do this for myself. And I'm not going to do this because that might help somebody else out. That's the world's perspective on many things that we go through in life. So as we've completed another year, and I know we're only a few days into to the new year, but and one that was probably much less desirable than others that we've lived through or we've gone through in life. Last year at this time, people were saying, new year, new me. I can count on every toe and finger I have, and I'd still run out of people that were saying those things. And 2020 will be my best year yet, and so on and so forth. One thing I saw uh, this week, though, was that 2020 is now literally hindsight. And I thought that's fitting. But so often we say these things when a new year starts, and I'm going to do these things because it's, it's a new year. It's the time to start new things. 
Yet these same people were the ones that likely had not such a great year. The ones that said, I'm going to have the best year I've ever had. Why? Because their faith was not rooted in the right thing. Their faith was rooted in what the world had to offer. And in 2020, the world didn't offer good things from the world's perspective. But from God's perspective, he always offers good things. Even when we're going through the valley, God's offering the right things for our lives. When we attempt to be like the world, though, we will constantly be let down. Constantly will we be let down. But when we put our faith in mankind, we will get let down every time, guaranteed. Because guess what? I'm human and you're human. And the people that we're around are human. We're flawed people. Wednesday night, we probably stayed an hour longer than we should have, and everybody had to drive home on the ice, so my bad. But I was thinking back as I was driving home this week, and, and two years ago, me and Emily told them my truck in an ice storm just the same. And I was thinking, well, I'm glad that's not happening, that I saw one car in the ditch, and then I saw another car in the ditch, and I'm thinking, okay, well, somebody's having a bad night. But so often we forget what's happened to us in the past, and we just say, well, I'm just going to do new things this year. Sometimes it's good to forget our past, right? Especially our, our sinfulness. Christ threw it as far as the east is from the west, but we learn from our mistakes at the same point. There is only one person that has never failed us, only one that has never fallen asleep on the job, only one that can help us in our most desperate times, and that's God. It's not your pastor, okay? I will tell you now, I will fail you at some point. You will get mad at me at some point, and that's fine. I can handle that. My wife gets mad at me a lot, and she'll watch this later and tell me that's not true. But I've been sleeping on the couch this week, not because she's mad, but it feels that way. But God is the only one who has never let us down. Our Heavenly Father has not and never will let us down in the year 2021 is where the rubber hits the road for Ellis Mound. That's not just me saying it, okay? I truly believe that in 2021, things are going to happen for us. Why? Because we're going to put the work in. You don't like that four-letter word, I understand. We'll talk more about that tonight. Hopefully you'll be here. But when I wrote this, I wrote this exactly, and I said, now this is not me just saying that I know exactly what will happen. However, I believe these verses that we're reading today more today than I did even yesterday and the day before that. See, God's not done with us as Christians. He's not done with us as a church. He's not done with our world just yet or he'd be back. God said that he would come at the right time for the end to happen. And this time he's not going to come as a baby. But as we begin this year, we should all turn our focus away from the negative things that the world and begin focusing on God. Then we, when we look at the world's point of view, we, we see it half empty. We don't see it half full. We see it half empty. Coming to church alone is not us focusing on God, though. And I hate to tell everybody that. But us coming to church alone is not us focusing on God. It's, it's a, a point that we need to make, right? But I can only show you so much information in 30 minutes. But you can open this every day. See, when we focus on God, we, we decide that we're going to do something on our own through the week. The radio station that we listen to, I drive around all day through Posey County. And I listen to Christian radio 99% of the time. Why? Because I, I need it, first of all, because <laughs> my temper gets a little the best of me sometimes. But for another reason, I want to be focused on God. I want God to be first and foremost in my life. So coming to church alone is not focusing on God. Reading our Bibles alone is not enough. Focusing our prayer life is not enough. But doing all of those combined is a starting point. That's where we begin our growth with God is when we take the time to read his word and to look to him for guidance and to come to church to fellowship with other Christians. So where do we begin though? How do we get to a point of focusing on God? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to see what he can do. What he can do. In verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. Often we attempt to rely on our own talents and our own understandings to accomplish something. And we as else matter, no, no, none immune to that, right? We can focus on what we, are, we do best. I do best at this. My wife will tell you she's not a big reader. 
I try to read a book a month. It doesn't work out that way because I pick a 300-pager and I'm not Keegan. I can't read that fast. Keegan reads books like 800 pages in a day, it seems like. But anyway, we as a church can fall into this trap as well when we attempt to do things within the church that's focused on what I want. Ellis Mound doesn't need to be what Trevor wants or what Emily wants or what anybody else here wants. It needs to be what God wants first and foremost. And now everybody that's here knows that. But we still need to say it sometimes. We need to remind ourselves daily that, that God's not happy with what we want. He's happy with what he wants and us doing that in his, in his church. When we do this, though, and we focus on our own things, we hinder what God can do in and through us. When we focus on what, what I can do, we're limiting God. Because God can do so much more than any of us combined in this room. No matter how old we are, how young we are, how many talents we have, we're nothing compared to what God can do in our lives. God is able to do through us, God is able through us to do anything. Sorry, can't talk. <laughs> but it takes us allowing God to use us. That's a big factor in 2020. We, we focused more on what was going on around us. And I'm sorry to say, but coronavirus didn't just go away overnight on December 31st and January 1st. As much as I would have loved that and everybody here would be fine with that, it didn't happen, okay? Unless science has done something that I, did, I missed it. Don't think it's happened, though. But my point is this, that if we focus on the world's perspective of things, God can't use that. God can't use us if we're too busy living our worldly desires out. But God can use us if we're willing to say, enough of what I want, God, but what you want is what I need. So what can God do? He can rescue from the fiery furnace in Daniel 3 and 17. We, we, most of us probably know that story. The fourth man in the fire. He can shut the mouths of lions, Daniel 6, 20 and 22. He can give sight to the blind, Matthew 9, 28 and 30. He's able to save us completely in Hebrews 7 and 25. Notice that I didn't say some of the way. I didn't say 50%. I didn't say 75%. But completely he can save us. And he's able to make grace overflow in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And in our verse today, he's able to do above and beyond. See, when we focus on what I can do, I'm limited. I can only do so much. But when we focus on what God can do, he can send his son to die for my sins. He can send his son to, to die for the world that hated him. We don't like to be hated in our own lives. We don't, we don't like people to not like us, right? But we need to be wanted, we need to be liked for the right reasons. Because of the attitude that we bring. Not because we're negative Nancy every time we go to work. I go to work and, and first thing out of the law, guys, another day. We're here. Woo. Can't wait to go to work again. And I come in with a smile on my face because I'm just happy to have a job, right? And we go through life and we, we have a different perspective no matter where we are. But the God that we serve can do so much more. Look around. There's not a whole lot of us here this morning. We have a good number right? But there's not a whole lot of us here. God's, God's preparing us for more. Preparing us for more in our own lives and for more of the people in our building. Why? Because we wouldn't be here week in and week out if he wasn't. We wouldn't show up with the, the, the inspiration to go another day if we didn't know God was still going to work in our lives. But we have to realize that he can do it, not me. When we do this, we see how little we can actually do it on our own. Humility is something we all probably struggle with in some form or fashion, and, and whatever it is. Just ask me, I'll tell you how good I am at something or how bad I am at it. <laughs> then just go play golf with me, I'll show you how bad I am, it's okay. But we have to realize that God doesn't have to use us. God, God doesn't need us, per se. But he wants us. He wants to use us individually and as a church. Else Mount, us, me and Rick were talking this morning, been through the ringer, several ups and downs, right? But guess what? We're all still here. We're still doing God's work. Why? Because God's not finished. When we see what God can do, he doesn't give up on us. And if God can not give up on me, a lowly sinner 
what else can he do? He loves us enough to say, hey, I, I, I still love you. I still want to use you, even though you've messed up a few times. Or maybe messed up over and over and over again. God's still not finished. Second thing, we have to realize where do we put our focus. How we look at things says a lot about us. I've said this a couple times already. We're either, in, we're either optimistic or we're pessimistic, right? There's only two kinds of people. Half full or half empty. We look at things that are big as if they are small. Think about that for a minute. We look at God as if he's a small person sometimes. Because we don't see him. We don't see the things that he's doing around us. We can look at a, think about a fire hydrant though. While a fire hydrant looks small, right? They're not huge things. It can gush water in volume and force that is out of its proportion and its size. So it's small, right? But it can produce a bunch of water in a short amount of time. Well, it's not anything out like, it's not magical, okay? But it, it's because the water isn't in that hydrant. There's no water in the hydrant. But that hydrant is connected to a reservoir that is always full. So, so the hydrant doesn't have any water in it. But when you turn the valve on it, guess what? Water comes out. Because it's tapped in. When we focus on the size of our God instead of the size of our problems, we're like that fire hydrant. When we, the church, are in sync with Jesus, we have a connection to a reservoir that never runs dry. We have a connection to a reservoir that is always overflowing. Think about that. We are a small church, right? We're a small church. But I'll tell you, revival has started with less people. Revival has started in smaller places. Why? Because a fire hydrant doesn't need the water that's inside of it, right? Because it's connected to a reservoir full of water. The more we read our Bible, the more we pray to God, the more we fellowship with other Christians, we're connected to Jesus that much more and to what is overflowing through him. And I continue, and, and I, I was reading, and he, and he said this. He says, when we allow our connection to be tight with God, we will gush out the power of God in every situation. Notice it doesn't say that, that if we have a tight connection to God, we'll gush out when he wants us to. No, but he wants us to all the time, right? See, when we want a fire hydrant, we've got to turn it on, right? It's like a light switch. We've got to flip the switch. If you want light in the morning, I probably take my daughter and wife off this morning as I walk into the bedroom doop, 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 just flip the lights on and doing my thing probably went over real good but the point is this that if God is able to do anything and everything he can use us he can use no matter how few or how many are here but we have to have that tight connection with God so the third thing is what do we do with it in 2021 what, what do we do with the power that God has given us in 2021 to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us? So however big your thought is for what God can do, it's bigger than that. However big of a thing you ask God to do, he's still bigger than that. There's people that pray every day, and, and St. Jude commercial was on, so it made me think of it when I was preparing. There's kids that have cancer every day that are struggling with cancer. There's adults that have cancer every single day and they're struggling with it. And I'm sure there's not just a few people praying for God to heal every one of them from cancer, right? And find a cure from cancer. God's just not ready yet. That doesn't mean God doesn't want to do it. I've said it before, God answers in three ways. Yes, no, and not yet. And in so many of our situations, he's at not yet. Why? Well, maybe we're not praying the right prayer. Maybe we're not asking for the right thing. So in 2021, what do we do with it? I know that every year we individually make goals. I've said it. And resolutions are selfish and directed for us. I'm going to read my Bible more. That's a good, good thing, right? But what am I going to do with it after I read it is the important part. In 2021, we need to make a goal. I don't like resolutions. Resolutions get broken. <laughs> but I'm very goal-oriented in my life. But our goal should be simple, directed and in the open for all to hear. Our goal shouldn't be something we hide under a, a blanket or under a basket from everybody else. 
I go back to the kiss method and you're going to laugh, right? Keep it simple, stupid. I'm stupid. It's okay. I have to keep it simple for myself. So we tell us, man, we're not going to do anything out of the ordinary. Okay, we're going to keep it simple. Why? Because God just wants us to be present. He just wants us to be used daily. If you think about it, God doesn't just want us on the weekends. He doesn't just want us when it's convenient for us. But he wants us all the time. Every day. So we have to allow God to guide us daily. We have to lean into him daily. We have to put in the effort daily. And simply love God more than we did yesterday. That's how we start a revival right there. By allowing God to lead us. By us leaning into him and saying, hey God, what do you need from me today? And for us putting in the effort, opening the Bible every day doing a devotional, whatever it might be. We have to encourage each other. That's a big thing. We as Christians have to encourage each other. We joke around a lot here, and that's fine. No problem with that. I'm normally the, the butt of everybody's joke. It's okay, especially Carrie's. Right, Carrie? <laughs> no, never, right? But, or Rick's. Rick got me this morning. I'll have to pick on Rick too. <laughs> but the point is this, that even though they pick on me, I still feel encouraged every week. We as Christians have to encourage each other because guess what? We all go outside of these four walls and we go somewhere different. We go to a different workplace. We go to a different, different home life, whatever it might be. But we can still encourage each other daily. Whether it's just, hey, hope you're doing okay today and I'm the world's worst about doing these things. But we all have something that we're good at, right? Some of us are better at Others, things than other people, right? I was telling Sheila she was a professional piano player because she can pick songs and play them. I, I got to look at it like a week to play one guitar. It takes me up forever. But we in Ellis Mound, we're, we are in need. We're in need of help. We are. It's okay to admit that, right? We're in need of encouragement and we're in need of God. We all have a relationship with God, but that relationship can grow. That relationship can be deeper than what it is today. But everything that we need can be provided by God. All we've got to do is tap into him. All we've got to do is say, hey, God, I, I just need to be a little closer today. Our goal should be specific. It should be measurable. It should have a time limit. We have to make it ours, and we have to put it in writing. That was from Dave Ramsey. I didn't, I didn't write that. But Dave Ramsey said to be specific. Hey, we want to grow by this amount of people. That's specific, right? Maybe too specific, but we want it to be measurable. It's got to have something we can measure it by, right? We want more people to feel led to be here or whatever it might be. We've got to have something that we can, we can ask people and they can measure it, right? It should have a time limit. It's not going to happen tomorrow, okay? I'm just, don't make that your time limit. Our goal for Ellis Mound can't be tomorrow it's going to happen. We've got to look a little bit further down the line, but we've got to put it in writing. Wednesday night we talked briefly, well I say briefly, <laughs> they would disagree it was not briefly, it was for an hour after we undecorated, but anyway, we talked for a little while, we rephrase that, and I, I handed a few of them a survey and, and I'm going to get some data and then we're going to look at it probably as a church and, and more people get it, but my point for doing this is a baseline, and if you didn't get it and you've got an opinion, just let me know, it's fine, okay, but it's a baseline of where are we struggling, what do we need help in? We as a church need help in something, right? We need help to get more people in the door. Us figuring out what the problem is is just the first step because then we've got to figure out the solution to the problem. But this morning, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close. In Ephesians chapter 3, though, these two verses will be a couple verses that I myself will lean on this year because I'm not able to do what God can do. I'm not able to do anything close to what God can do. But I can let God use me. And we individually can let God use us. I, I don't care if you're able to get around or not. God can still use us. Whatever state that we're in, if we're willing to be used, God will use us. But God has laid these verses on my heart for us as a church. 
Emily's, me and Emily were talking, and, and it was funny how it worked out. We were, I'll tell the story. We were just looking at verses in the Bible, and I said, we need to figure out a theme for 2021 for our church. I said, because we've got to see something. We've got to look towards the end goal. And she said, well, how about Ephesians chapter 3? And I, okay, I kind of, you know, remember some verses. And she goes, 20 and 21. And I went, huh, that's convenient. Remind me what they say. And she read them, and I said, yep, that's it. But we at Ellis Mountain, we just need a little more. We need a little more of God in our lives. There's a song out by, uh, I think it's Zach Williams, and it says, he needs a little less of me and a little more like Jesus. I need to be a little less like Trevor and a little bit more like Jesus every day. Sheila's shaking her head. She knows what song I'm talking about. I'll get that one worked up for next week maybe. But my point is this, that no matter how much we get into God's word, no matter how much we talk to God, we've got to lean on him every day. We've got to be dependent on God for every aspect of our lives. I'm going to ask that you would stand. I'm going to ask Carrie and Sheila to come. And as I close this morning, there was one more little thing I saw, and, and it, it hit me hard this week. And it says this, we need to stop focusing on what we can't do and start focusing on what God can do. If we focus on what I can do and what you can do, we're limited. We can only go so far on our own. But if we quit focusing on what I can't do and say, hey, God, I know you can do it. I'm going to give it to you. Things change. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you thankful for this day that you've given us. Thankful for the message that you've given us, God, that you've not left us. You've not forgotten us, God. You're not done with us. God, I just ask that you would encourage each and every one of us, God, to be a better Christian, to follow you just a little bit closer, God, to, to tap into you just a little bit more, God, because we're in need of you. God, we love you and we, we, we praise you in everything that you do for us, God, even, even in the hard times. But God, I ask in, in 2021 as we enter this year, God, that you would help each and every one of us encourage one another. That you would, you would encourage us, God, to know that you're still working. There's still work to be done and you can use each and every one of us individually. God, I ask that you would forgive me where I failed you. In this time of invitation, God, just to allow those that are in need this morning to walk the aisle freely. God, that if there's a need at all, if it's salvation or, or baptism or, or church membership, God, or just something they need to pray about, that you would just allow them to do that, God. God, if they're not comfortable, that they would just grab somebody and go to a classroom and just, just talk to that person, God. God, again, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are willing to send your son to die on a cross for my sins. And God, I just ask that you would help us to lean more into you and realize that we can't do it on our own, but we can do it with you. God, again, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.